Yes. Took it straight down. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, it's a bluegill. Not the species we were after, but uh, this video we're going to talk about two live bait setups for some deep water fall crappie fishing. It's October. It doesn't feel like October. We uh, we got some really warm weather. The first it's October 11th. We got some really warm weather this first part of October, and. Uh, these crappie haven't transitioned to their fall, complete fall transition yet. Water temps are mid 60s. Typically, once they get into low 60s and definitely in the 50s, they're going to transition out to that hard to soft bottom transition edge. I might have to cut the line on this guy. He swallowed it. I am going to have to retie. But I'm going to show you two live bait setups for deep water crappie that you can use for October, November, and for those of you down south, well into December. So, so let's show you how to tie on this first rig. So for the first rig, we're using a 1 8 ounce bullet weight. As you can see right here, just something you use for Texas rigging if you're a bass fisherman. We're gonna be using a size 12 barrel swivel, which is this right here. Hopefully that shows up. It's pretty small, but that's okay. This is a number two Aberdeen hook by Zone Lock. It's got that super nice little bend there. It kind of keeps that barb out of the fish's mouth and it keeps from tearing up your minnow. Um, but first thing we're gonna do is slide the bullet weight up the line just like that oh actually forgot about forgot to mention we're gonna cut off a little bit of a leader here we're gonna use about a, a 12 12 inch leader here and this is gonna be tied on your barrel swivel is gonna be connected between these two pieces right here but first we can swat slide the uh, bullet weight all the way up doesn't really matter how far then we're gonna tie on our barrel swivel uh, you can use whatever knot you'd like I prefer the improved clinch knot it's a pretty strong knot it's a little bit bulky but you want a little bit of bulk because that uh, that that bullet weight is actually gonna slide down from time to time and kind of hit this knot so a bigger knot is probably gonna be a little bit better we're also gonna tie on a, a uni knot with a piece of bobber stop above this to give it a little extra protection from getting torn up from that bullet stop. You could use a rubber bobber stop if you wanted as well. Um, you'd have to slide that on before you tie on the, the swivel. So we're gonna cut the tag into that. There, and then we're gonna tie on, we got about our 12 inch leader, tie it onto the other side of the swivel. Again, another improved clinch knot. I have another video explaining all this. You're just pinching it between your against your middle finger, wrap it about six, seven times, put the tag in through that loop, and then it creates a second loop. You're gonna put it back through that loop and pull it tight. And that's your uh, improved clinch knot, sometimes called a fisherman's knot. To cut the tag end on that. And then for our Aberdeen hook, whenever I'm using an Aberdeen hook, I really like using a Snell knot. Um, you, you're just gonna put the tag end through the eyelet away from the point of the hook. Pull out about four or five inches of line, maybe a little bit less, and then you're gonna wrap the tag end around that line you got pinched against the hook shaft and the hook shaft itself about four or five times. I didn't use enough. And then you got this little loop here, so you can put that tag end through your loop. There we go and then you're gonna slide it all tight. Make sure those wraps stay underneath the eyelet of the hook. They're gonna slide up right underneath the bottom of that eyelet. So that's going to be the, the minnow piece. And then our barrel weight is gonna sit right above that swivel, like so. It's gonna shoot that minnow down to the depths of 20, 25 feet, whatever you're fishing, super fast. And this allows that minnow to really swim around. Um, we're gonna tie on stopper between that bullet weight and that swivel just to help protect it. So for this we're just going to tie a simple uni knot. Probably cut a little too much line for this but pick out braid or a thicker braid or a thicker mono or fluorocarbon whatever you want. Um, this is 30 pound braid but you're just going to make a loop pinch it against your mono filament like so and then you're going to wrap it a bunch of times Four or five times should do the trick. And 
and then you're going to pull the tag ends tight and that's going to be our little stopper knot to protect that knot we have above our barrel swivel. We're going to tie one more further up a line above our barrel swivel and that is going to be our stopper for the bobber. Now this knot you don't really need to tighten up too much. You don't really care if it slides uh, because all it's doing is protecting that that other improved clinch knot. So you're just going to slide it down and then for this slide it right down there and then we're going to tie one more knot above our barrel swivel here. It doesn't really matter because it's going to slide up the line and since we have our nice three-in-one bobbers we're going to be able to just hook it up very simply and if we need to unhook it for some reason line gets tangled just pop that spring and unhook the bobber. So again just a simple uni knot. You're going to make a loop pinch it against your monofilament and again, this is six pound monofilament. I always use monofilament when I'm using slip bobbers. You're gonna wrap it around both the loop braid and that monofilament. About four or five times should do the trick. That's about four, should be enough. And then pull her tight, pull both the tag ends apart. I probably pulled out a little too much line, but there you go. There's a simple uni knot for a nice bobber stop. Now on this one, make sure to leave about an inch or so of tag end, because you are gonna have to tighten this up over time, if you start catching a bunch of fish um, or making a, a bunch of casts, this will slip. All these, you know, yarn stops or even if you're using braid line or, or fluorocarbon or mono, whatever you're using, they do slip over time. So give yourself some tag end to adjust it and tighten it back up, just like that. See that? And then it's going to close. Now it can slide up and down the line. Super simple. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is our first bobber rig that we're going to be using. Now there's one downfall to this rig, and I'm gonna show you in the next rig I tie on, but first let's catch some fish using this setup. And if it gets tangled like that, let's pop the bobber off. Solves a lot of problems right there. Don't have to deal with a big tangled mess. We clip it right back on, there you go. Let's go catch some fish. I'd like to get, I'd like to really show you what this bite is like on these bobbers. I think it's pretty valuable. We're gonna, oh, we're gonna get a couple with this setup and then I'll show you my second setup which is a little bit more of a less aggressive bite and one of these colder temps hit in November late October November I'm probably gonna switch to that setup oh here's a pop here we go he's holding it down oh. and he got me sometimes you swing and miss Another cool thing that I highly recommend is having some sort of minnow bucket in the colder, colder temps. You can just pull the mesh net out so you don't have to dip in your hand in a minnow bucket, getting all cold and frozen. Because that will happen come late October, November time frame. I'm kind of switching it up between hooking them between the back and the mouth. I'm not really sure what's going to be a better hookup. They're in some deep water. Oh, here he goes. No doubter. No doubter. Get away from that, uh, that buoy marker. Oh man, this guy's a good fighter. Not a big fish, but a good fighter. That usually is what'll happen if on these rigs. Sometimes it, they hit it on the way down and you don't really see it because that weight is holding that bobber kind of vertical. And they end up choking it pretty good. See if we can get this out. If I can't get it out, I'm gonna, just gonna cut the line and throw them in the live well. But I think I, oh yeah, there we go, pops out easy. That's only about a seven and a half, eight inch fish. See you, bud. Still got my minnow. Let's get back down there. Oh, jeez. Took it straight down. And we got ourselves a bluegill. Good bluegill too. It's a nice, there's some nice bluegill on these deeper, deeper brush piles. Hammering these minnows. That is a solid, solid bluegill. He's gonna go back. We're only keeping crappie today. All right, we're gonna switch up to this other rig for more of a subtle bite. So let's try to catch one on, the, on this rig. All right, for our second bobber rig, this is much more simplistic, um, but we're gonna put the split shot weights 
in a pretty particular location to prevent what most likely happens when you're using the other rig. So to start it off, we're using the number two uh, zone lock Aberdeen hook again. And I'm just gonna tell, tie another snell knot. Since I already explained that, I'm not gonna show, I'm not gonna go through it again. Snell knot tied on. Now for our split shot, we're using a 1 8 ounce split shot again, okay? Because crappie are notorious for what's called a negative bite, which isn't necessarily means they, uh, they don't want to hit something. Sometimes it just means they're super aggressive, and what that happens is they grab that minnow and they rise up the water column with it. If you're using that other rig, you won't know because that bobber is just going to stay like this, straight up and down. But with this rig, when um, somebody, when that crappie grabs that minnow, that bobber tilts on its side. It's called negative bite. All right, so you're just gonna clip it directly above the eyelet of the hook. You could also use a eighth ounce jig if you really wanted to. Um, I know a lot of people are just really like using the Aberdeen hooks if you're fishing with live minnows. So now that we got that set up, we're just gonna tie a uni knot again above both that, that hook and that jig. It doesn't matter where, because you're gonna be able to slide it. And again, I'm using 30 pound braid. You can use whatever you want. Just make sure, I make sure the poundage is bigger than your main line. So I'm using six pound mono. If you wanted to use another mono filament, cause that's what you had in the boat, try to use like 10 or 12 pound mono. Um, it's just gonna help you out, stop that bobber. You don't really want it the same size. Otherwise you're probably gonna have to tie multiple uni knots to get that, that knot big enough. So, it doesn't slide directly through the notch on the bobber. So again, uni knot, just gonna make the loop, pinch it again against the uh, main line, wrap it three, four, five times. We're gonna do about four. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna pull both the tag ends of, in this case, the braid, pull it apart, wet it a little bit. And then again, make sure you leave about an inch or so of tag end so you can actually tighten this back up because it's going to get loose. Once you start catching fish, it's gonna get caught in that top end of the eyelet or that very top eyelet of the rod tip. So now that we got our bobber side tied on oh, with these three in ones again, just hook it in there like that and bam. Now this rig, super important. If you feel like you're missing bites with the other rig, you still wanna fish in deep water with a live minnow setup. This rig is great for sensing those negative bites. When a crappie comes up, grabs that minnow, rises up in the water column with it, that bobber's gonna go sideways. So now we got this one tied on, let's go catch some more fish. Oh, here we go. Got him. That's a crappie. Yep. Now that guy was not a negative bite, that guy just took it straight down. I'm gonna put players on him. He's going in the live well. There you go. That uh, we're gonna catch a bunch more here, but that is one of the one of the bites you're gonna get with this jig right on top of that Aberdeen hook. It's either gonna be a bam straight down, or that bobber's gonna come up to the side. This has been a super aggressive bite today, so I'm not sure if we're gonna get that negative bite showing you the bobber popping to the side or not. Typically, that only happens when they're semi-lethargic or if they're they're really willing to come off these brush piles and and go up and get a minnow. And I don't know if you guys saw the last video, I was bobber fishing. Had a muskie come up and smack one of my crappie. He's running with it. There he is. And so that's why these crappie, sometimes if there's a muskie or a pike a or a big predator fish in the area, they're really not willing to risk coming way off these, these brush piles or these cribs. 
but we're going to drop back down here. I don't know if I'm deep enough for that. Maybe. Some brush pile right here. Oh, that bobber just go down? I'm imagining things. Oh yeah, it did. <laughs> Making sure everything's in camera for you. There's another crappie. That's a little guy though, I think. Yeah. He's not gonna go in the live well. These bites have just been, they're grabbing it and swimming straight down with it. They're not coming up. Live minnows, slip bobbers. I mean, virtually year round. This is a great, great tactic to catch crappie. He's going back though. See if we can get that in frame for you. This is going to be a little bit tricky to keep that in frame, but I'm going to do my best. Oh, took it down. Took it. Up. Now, I don't know if you guys saw that. Hopefully I got it on, on the big camera. That fish was just holding it. And with these waves, that bobber was just still just sitting below the waves. That is kind of how I felt that bite. And I think he's going to be a little too small for the live well. There's no size limit on a lot of these lakes up north. But yeah, he's, yeah, he's going to go a little small. I don't really want to fillet anything under nine. So... I want to show you kind of how I keep my minnows fresh in this live well here. Um, I got this Lindy minnow tamer that in the summertime is easy. It just clips. I can throw it out the side of the boat. But in the wintertime when you you don't really want to get your fingers all wet, what you do is you got a, a bucket. This is actually a, a Fraybill Magnum bait station, 13 gallon. And so I'll just open this up, grab a handful of, of crappie minnows. I got some sucker minnows too because I was... Thinking about throwing for some walleye later today. Just grab a handful, throw whatever you think you need in your bait station. And then that way I can throw this big Lindy minnow tamer back in the live well, run the live well aerators and keep these guys all fresh. So that's basically all I need. My little minnow setup for you guys. I'll link both those products below, just in case you might want to use them. It might be a little too deep. Oftentimes, if it if that bobber just doesn't look like it's sitting right and you keep setting the hook and there's nothing there, your depth might be a little off. So go ahead, just adjust your slip. Ah, my trolling motor's gonna get in the way of the shot here. Somebody pop it. Yep, there he is. He popped it. That bobber actually came up sideways. I'm not sure if you guys caught that. I should get the bump board out. These are, yeah, it's not really size I want to clean. He's only, he might be nine, but I, I want some no doubter nines. That bobber came up and went boop right to the side real quick. And then it sat back down to what it normally looks like with just a minnow. So you always gotta be watching that bobber, especially in waves. It can be a super tricky bite, but the bite can turn on because it's uh, breaking up that surface. Mixing up the visibility down there for these crappie. There he is, got him that time. There's a good keeper crappie. There we go. Well, it seems like the bite has been super aggressive, so that subtle approach of using that split shot right above, right above the Aberdeen hook may not be necessary on a day like this, but on days that, oh, battery just died. On days that these crappie are very finicky, that tactic can be very valuable to put fish in the boat. We're gonna to try to catch a few more because I wanna make some crappie tacos for dinner. And uh, then we'll wrap it up. 
two very simple slip bobber setups for deep water fishing this fall. Uh, didn't catch a ton of fish today, but I got enough for a meal, which is pretty much always what you want to do when you go out crappie fishing. The thing about live minnows, you're going to go through a lot of them. The main takeaways for this video, I wanted you to understand kind of the different types of bites given these two different setups that you're going to see. So typically if you're running this, this more of a leader with that heavier uh, bullet weight, about a foot or so above your Aberdeen hook, that bite is just going to go straight down. You're going to see that that bobber just, they're just going to take it. And that's for more of an aggressive bite. When the bite is not that aggressive or you're not sure if it is aggressive or not, but you're still fishing deeper water, go ahead, size up on your split shot. This is that 316 sound split shot. That two, two bites that you'll typically see. Today was a super aggressive day. Sometimes that's just the way it is. These crappie, they'll tap it and then they'll take the bobber straight down or they'll grab it and they'll run left and right on the less aggressive bites or what happens, even though they're not that aggressive, they'll grab that minnow and run up the water column with it and your bobber will go sideways like this, okay? Or it'll, it'll sit cockeyed. Those are the two bites that I, I wanted to demonstrate and show to you. Unfortunately, we only saw one bite, I think, which was the super aggressive straight down with the bobber. I'm gonna leave the entire rig, or both rigs, in the video description if you got any questions about them. Eight foot ACCs, um, these are 1,000 size PC Fun reels. This one's the Viper X, this is the Honor XT, and then the Rod and Bob's three-in-one slip bobber. I'll leave a link to all of that in the video description. Uh, line sizes, everything will be in the video description. If you got any comments or questions or you want to uh, want me to do a video on a specific rig, uh, this fall post them in the comment section below or you can message me on either facebook or instagram always love hearing from you the bobber just slipped out of my hand there so appreciate you watching i'm gonna go fry these things up for lunch and then possibly make it back back out on the water this evening but all right we'll see you